Well, we've reached a point with our 4.0 where things start to get interesting. We've done all of our inspections. We've checked and measured the cylinders to make sure that they're all round and there's no taper involved. And now we've got to hone this thing. So at this stage of the game, what you do is either going to make or break the end result. Because choosing the right stone to hone with and getting the right crosshatch in the cylinder is key to getting the rings to seat and have the engine operate it, it, the way it's supposed to operate, maximum efficiency. But before we get into any of the actual honing, let's talk about the finishes because this is really important. You have to know what you're working with to get the best results. So engines built, let's say, from the middle 1980s on back all generally used a cast iron ring. Now I'm not talking about high performance engines, race engines, or anything like that. I'm talking about just regular production engines. They all used cast iron rings. And cast iron is like, it's, it's like the ultimate bulletproof material for rings. There's a lot of drag involved in them. But they heat, they, they laugh off heat. They're uh, very, very forgiving. Those engines take a rough bore finish. Now when you get to the middle 1980s and up, you start getting to the, into the low tension ring packages. So you get into a steel ring, you get into stainless rings, a high performance engines, you've got molly rings. All of those require different bore finishes. So I'm going to show you an example of something that you may run across that you, you, know, you don't realize it, but this will get you. This is a slant block that we had bored and honed at machine shop. But we didn't specify what kind of ring we were going to use on this engine. And so they automatically gave it a fine hone, a fine finish. They used a fine stone on this. The problem here is that we're going to use a cast ring on this engine. And the cast ring will not seat properly with this fine hone. So we're going to have to rehone this with a coarser stone so we get that initial break in. Now that's the funny thing, when you deal with these older engines, the cast ring engines, the first minute or so that they're running is, is pretty entertaining. It's, it's, like, it's like an exercise in violence. Within the first few seconds of the engine running, the exhaust will glow cherry red. You'll see the temperature start to skyrocket because there's so much friction happening as the rings, the cast iron rings, are scraping away at that rough bore in the process of making their home, that it's just pure violence. Now, if you took somebody who only deals with modern engines, somebody who never, who's never dealt with an old cast iron ring engine, and you, you put a freshly honed cast iron ring engine in front of them and said, here, spin this thing over. They put the wrench on it and they're like, oh no, there's something desperately wrong here. This thing will never run, it's terrible because they're used to a low tension ring package that uses a fine hone. So this is why you need to know, before you go any further, you need to know exactly what the ring, cons what the ring pack consists of and how to hone it before you go any further. If you use a coarse stone like you would use on a cast ring, but you're doing it, let's say, on a stainless ring engine, you'll kill the rings. They'll never seat, or the heat will get to them, it'll warp, they'll distort, it'll take all the tension out. So you have to know what type of ring you're going to use going in. So on our 4.0, these engines originated during that cast ring era. But as evolution went on, they went to a lower tension ring package in the 1990s. So this uses a steel ring. Instead of using a cast iron ring, this uses a lower tension steel ring. So for this, we can't use that coarse bore like we would on a cast ring engine, we have to go to a medium grit stone. Now, if let's say it was a stainless ring engine, or if it was a molly ring, a high performance engine, then we would need a fine hone, like we have on that slant block over there. So, for this one, for these rings, we need a medium grit stone. So, this morning, well, you used to be able to get stone hones at any auto parts store. They had a whole variety, everything you, you could use. I hit all of the stores locally. The only people that had any was our local Napa. I got these Evercraft stones. I have no idea what part of the world they come from or, or if they're any good or not. We're going to find out in a minute. 
I know I bought one other set of off-brand stones from the same place, and they didn't last the entire engine. I had to actually buy, go out and buy another set so I could finish honing that last cylinder. I hope these things work a little bit better than that. But that's, that's the thing you need to know going in what finish the rings you're going to use are going to require in order to seat. And that's one of the reasons why you put a, a cross hatch in the cylinder to help the ring seat, to, to create that mating between the cylinder and the piston ring. The other reason for the cross hatch is that the cross hatch, even at, once, once everything is, is, is mated and the high spots of the cross hatch have been um, you know, uh, uh, rubbed away, there still has to be a little bit of cross hatch because what happens is microscopic film of oil fills in that space, the low spaces in the cross hatch. And it just it acts as like an eternal lubricant. There'll always be a light film of oil on the cylinder wall, but because it's clung into the cylinder wall, it won't burn off during the combustion process. And so that's why the, the pro a proper cross hatch is, is crucial to the long life of your engine. So what I'm going to do is I'll take a break for a minute and I'm going to take these stones and I'm going to put them on this hone and we'll give this thing a shot. All right, turns out these things are actually pretty good. We did a, we just did this cylinder just to test it out, and they're fine. So let's take this one from scratch, and we'll cover all of the bases. Everything you need to know. So the first thing is this. Right away, I see it in the comments already. You can't hone an engine without a torque plate. Yeah, I know, I know, right? Now you absolutely can hone an engine without a torque plate. Don't listen to anybody who tells you you can't hone an engine without a torque plate. I can assure you that these engines from the factory, regular production engines, not Ferraris or Lamborghinis, but regular production engines were not honed with a torque plate. The reason a torque plate is used, well, what a torque plate is, it's a simulation of the cylinder head. So it's a thick steel plate that has holes in it so you could hone through it, but it matches the deck and it's torqued in place. Because remember, the cast iron is, is a lot like rubber. People don't think of cast iron as being flexible like rubber, but it actually is. So when the head is torqued in place, the load in the deck from the, from the head bolts slightly distorts the cylinder walls. Now, in an engine, an extreme application engine, yes, it does make a difference. It's the difference between making 940 horsepower and 942 horsepower. I mean, honestly, that's really, you're splitting hairs at that, at that stage of the game. For a regular production engine, mild hot rod engine, the kind of stuff that we're going to deal with on this channel, it doesn't make any difference. So you don't need a torque plate. Don't listen to the people who tell you you need a torque plate for this. All right. So, like I said, this cylinder turned out really good. This one we're going to have to go back to again. This was just rough honed to check it, our initial you know, check. Let's do this one. So, we wiped it down with gas to get the surface oils off of it. And we've got our tension set where we're comfortable. 
with the stones, and you, you set the tension with this this spring adjustment over here. And this is what we were fotsing around on this owner to find where it was right. And to get the right speed and to get the right RPM. Speed meaning in and out and RPM obviously the speed of the drill. So, uh, we want to keep this thing wet as we're doing this. Oh, that's a little caddy wampus. Try to hold the drill perpendicular to the deck. Try not to vary the speed of either the, uh, the RPM of the drill or your in and out. And try to bridge the two sections. The very top section here, which we know is true, there's never any wear right here and the bottom where the skirt rides. Those are your two true areas of the cylinder and you want to use the stones to bridge those two areas and bring the center of it even with those two areas. Okay, so you, now you see our cross hatch. Now I want a little more cross hatch than that. And also you can see we've got a little bit of shadowing, like right here. But we can see that our our cross hatch, our our our, our marks go th right through. So we know that those aren't really low areas. Got the typical low area right here, just under the ridge. But again, we can see where our stones are actually making contact with it. So you don't want to go too crazy with that. It's not that important. So here's something that you should be aware of. And I'm, I'm actually I'm seeing, I'm seeing one right here, but you won't be able to see it on the camera. Oftentimes when an engine sits, you get some water in it, you'll get some uh, surface rust on the cylinder, and it'll stain the cylinder. You'll get a dark spot, a you know, discoloration. And this is why it's important to use a straight leg hone or a fixed stone hone instead of a dingleberry. That dark area could either represent a low spot or it could just be a stain. So the, the metal stain, let's say for, for three, five, eight thousandths of an inch deep, depending on how, how bad the rust was or what material it was that stained it. If you can see your crosshatch through the dark area, it's fine. Don't worry about it. If you can't see your crosshatch through that dark area, that means it's a low spot. And you should have caught that when you were checking the cylinder with the ring. You remember shining the light up from underneath? Now, if you use a dingleberry hone, you would never know if it was a low spot because the crosshatch, the, the scratch marks from the hone would go right into the low spot and you wouldn't recognize it. So on this engine here, again, I know you don't have to be able to see it because it's so far down the cylinder. I'm looking at it right now. There's a light discoloration area, but I see my marks going right through it. So I know that that's nothing to worry about. So I want to get just a little bit more of an angle on this. I'm going to, I'm going to slow down the speed, the RPM of the drill. I'm going to increase the stroke a little bit. Do this. Okay. 
You have to try to stay as mechanical as possible. You know, you're trying to do the work of a machine here. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Beautiful. Now I'm not going to go crazy cleaning this now because this whole block is going to have to be cleaned. As you're honing, remember all of this slurry the material from the stones and the material come off the solenoid walls is all running into the bottom of the block. So that area is going to, have to be scrubbed out. It's one of the reasons why changing the oil, you know, you break in oil, very important after like, you know, just a few hundred miles because all of that just flushes down into the, into the pan and you want to get that out. So, but that looks good. I like that solenoid. I have to go back and do this one again because like I said, we just hit this with some crusty old stones to make sure the solenoid was good and it is good. And, uh, yeah, that looks fine. I like that. So now we do these three, and then we're just going to clean the deck. We're going to take a, a block of wood, a 2 by 4 a piece of 2 by 4 We're going to wrap it with a fine emery cloth, and we're just going to go across the deck just to make sure that everything is smooth and straight here. Check it with a straight edge, but I'm sure that the deck is fine on this engine. And then uh, we go from there. Our next step is to order parts for this thing. That ought to be fun. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that, and I'll see you tomorrow.